Hey guys, this is Feb Clayton with Autodesk. And the reason why I'm here today is because this school of biomedical engineering asked me to model this aspirator, which you see here on your screen, in Fusion 360. Well, the only thing I had to start with was a picture and the STL file. So I wanna show you how to import an STL file into Fusion. So when you go to Fusion here, I have my data panel open and the big open canvas area. In case you do not see a data panel, don't worry. If your screen looks like this, all you have to do is click on this icon here on the top left of your screen that looks like a tic-tac-toe or a Rubik's cube to show and, um, and to hide your data panel. Just click here again. And now I wanna upload this to this particular project. So I'm gonna click on the upload button. I'm gonna select my files. And then I'm going to wait for this to upload. It's already here. Just click Upload. Once that is complete, I'm just going to click, click Close. And you're going to see here on your data panel that your image shows up. As you can tell, I have already modeled this a couple of times uh, for your video here. But this looks a little bit different. You can see the mesh and the triangles on it. So I'm going to double click to open it. And you can see my STL file. Now, the problem we have with this is that you have too much of the triangles and you need to smooth this out. So I can go here and change my environment from scoped to model. And here, under modify, I can go under mesh. And I want to change from mesh to B-Wrap. And let me bring my other dialog here. I'm going to select the body that I wanted to convert. What is that I'm doing with this is to create a new component or a new body. I'm going to leave this as a new body and click OK. Now, as you can see, it changed from the original purple to this grayish color, but I still have too much triangulation going on. There is a way to fix that. You can go under the patch environment of Fusion. And here on the modify, you can merge some of this to smooth them out. So for example, here I have all these triangles on a flat surface. I obviously do not need them. So I can select them and let me zoom in because they're very little, you know, and it's showing here on my dialog how many I have selected. And just for the example, I'm going to put four, say OK and see what happens here. And now I only have a simple one, right? To simplify this a lot. However, my intention here is not to use this model that I already have. My intention here is to just measure this so I can actually recreate this model. So I'm gonna go in the inspect measure if I wanna take measurements, right? of this part. I can either select a whole line like this one and then it's going to tell me how long this line is. On this case it's in millimeters and I have 1060 millimeters. Or I can select two points as well. So I can click with the right button of my mouse to repeat measure and click two points. Point number one, triangulating that point point number two and then it's also going to give me here the results of the measurement the position x y and z and so on and so forth so i have all that information here once i was in control of this information i could start doing the model and that's what we're going to do next okay so let's start working on that project of the aspirator so here on my Fusion 360 screen, the first thing I want to check is if my units are the same units as the units I have on the model that I got, right? So I'm going to go here on the preferences and I'm going to check under the default design units what is that I'm using. So you can change here from millimeters, centimeters, inches, feet. I'm going to leave in millimeters because that's the measurement that I had before. 
And now to start my model, I'm going to start by sketching a rectangle. So I'm going to go here under the create sketch under the model environment. And here you're going to see all the planes where I can start working on. I like to work on the X, Y plane here that is indicated by the blue and red lines. And if you can see, it looks the same here on the top. So I'm going to click on this plane and now we automatically switch into this view, the top view, right? And I'm eliminating the grid so it's easier for you guys to see. You also have this other window that opens here with the sketch palette. Do not worry about this for now, okay? But what I need right now is a rectangle, which it will be the base of the aspirator. So I'm going to go here at a two-point rectangle. I'm going to start from the center point just because it's going to be a good reference for me. And before I press the click button again, again, I clicked with my left button of my mouse. Before I do that again, I'm going to enter the measurements that I do know. So I know that I have an 8 millimeter here. To change to the next measurement, just press the tab key. And this one is going to be 110 millimeters. I'm going to press enter. And that I have my initial rectangle. Now I can stop the sketch. The moment I stop the sketch, I go back into that initial uh, view that I had. My viewing cube here changes view as well. Now I want to stretch this thing, right? I want to transform this into a box. There are many ways to do that infusion, but for now we're going to use a quick key, which is just by pressing the Q letter in your keyboard. So by pressing the Q letter, which is a shortcut, we start the press pull command. And you see Fusion is smart and it's going to ask us what is that we want to select and it's going to be highlighted in blue. So I'm going to select our rectangle. That dialog box changes depending on what I'm asking the software to do. And you see that this arrow shows up. Well, what this arrow does is if I click it with my left mouse button, and I go up or down, you can see that volume showing up. And then I know, based on my previous measurements, that this has to be five millimeters high. So I'm just going to put five millimeters here and I'm going to press OK. And now I have the nice volume right there. So now let's look at how to create that hollow part from inside the base of the aspirator. Well, what is important for you to know is that those buttons of your mouse are going to be really important for you in Fusion. Um, the button in the middle, the one that goes up and down, the scroll button, is going to be important for you to zoom in, in and out. And if you just click on it and move it around, you can pan around your drawing. So let's zoom a little bit here so we can see our part really well. And in order to create that hollow part inside, we're going to use the modify shell command. And if I just hover, it gives you a description of what the command does. I'm going to click on the shell one and Fusion is asking me to select a face or a body. Well, I want the bottom face, not this top face. So I am just going to press the shift button of my mouse of my keyboard, sorry, and at the same time press the mid button of the, my mouse to orbit. If you do not want to do that, you can also use the orbit command here at the bottom, click on it, and just use the left button of your mouse. The same if you're using a, a Mac mouse, the magic mouse that does not have the middle button, or if you're using a trackpad, and I'm putting on your screen right now a quick image showing the different options you have to move about your screen infusion using different methods. On my case here, I'm going to use the shift, click the middle button because I want to select the bottom face. And now it's asking me what is the thickness. Well, my thickness, I measured that before, is going to be 1.5 millimeters. And as you can see, it gives me a preview. I like it, I'm going to say OK. And he created that shell, right? 
Now, how do I know if it is 1.5 millimeters all over? Because I want it to be 1.5 millimeters on the top too. Well, one way to do this, and again, I'm going to go on the inspect command that I like very much, is to use a section analysis, which is a very fast way to see what's happening inside your drawing. I'm going to click on a face as my point of reference, and here I'm going to go up and down so I can see the inside. This piece is really simple, so I'm going to see the simple section, but if you have many components inside this, or many bodies inside this component, you would see all of them and they will show in different colors. It looks to me like it's very much the same 1.5 millimeters all over. And if I go on this view and I can zoom in, I can even see it better. So now what we want to do is we need to round those corners here. Uh, if you recall from the image on our aspirator, those corners are rounded. So easy to do here, just go to modify, fill it, as you can see here on the image that shows up. And if you select one of those corners and you just move the arrow here up and down, it can give you a preview of how this is going to look right, right? How this is going to look. This is a preview. If you want to eyeball it, this, but on our case, we do not want to. We have a measurement. And also, we want to select more corners. We are not just rounding this one. So I'm going to cancel the selection by pressing this X here inside my dialog box. I'm going to press the Shift button on my keyboard, and I'm going to select multiple edges. So I want four edges. So here, you double check if it says four. And on the radios, I know what I want. I want two millimeters. I think this looks good. I'm going to say OK. And there you go. You have done your you know, edges here. And if you recall, you have that on the bottom too. Okay, so now we, we also want to round those edges here. They are also rounded in the original aspirator that we got. So we're gonna repeat the fillet command and it's easy, we just right click with the button of our mouse to show the marking menu that has the most common used comments here and the last command we've done. So just click on the repeat fillet and remember the selection. You can select multiple ones using the shift, right? So I'm selecting all these edges here. And let me turn this around so I can get this other one here. And I have four. And then I'm going to use the same. Let's see how it looks like. Two millimeters because it gives me a preview. I like how this looks like. I'm going to press OK. You guys try that by yourselves. Okay, so now I need to uh, put those cylinders, right? Uh, and to start that, I need to start a sketch. So we're going to go here on, under the sketch command. And I'm going to select a circle diameter because that's going to be the base for our cylinder. And here I need to select location for this, right? To select the plane where I'm going to do the sketch. And if you recall, the moment I do this, uh, Fusion automatically changes my view. And um, I am going to select any point here in, you know, near the edge of my aspirator. So I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see this better. And you're going to notice that if you hover um, your mouse, uh, you know, on top of lines here, the symbol might appear, which is a triangle, which indicates you are in the midpoint of that line. And if I just move that from the midpoint, there is this little line that shows up that is dashed. Uh, and the line is telling me that I'm still attached to the midpoint and that this is a 90 degree angle. So I'm just going to place my center point anywhere here because for now that doesn't matter and you guys are going to see why. And I know that the diameter of the circle is 4.5. So I'm going to press enter twice here and you're going to see that that circle is blue. That's not a good thing for um, our drawing because what that means is that if I click on the circle, I can still move it around anywhere and I'm going to lose the midpoint that I wanted. So I'm going to undo this. I can undo by going up here or I can just do control Z on my keyboard if you're using a Mac command Z. And I need to restrain this so it does not move around by accident or when I'm doing other commands. So for me to do that, I'm going to use another hotkey on my keyboard, and that's D for dimension. 
and you see that my cursor, a little symbol appears, and I'm gonna click on the center and the edge because that's a dimension I do know. And I'm gonna click anywhere here and I'm gonna change that to five millimeters because that's the dimension we do know. Uh, is it still blue? Because I'm only uh, constraining this from one end horizontally, not vertically. So I need to also constrain this vertically. Well, I know this whole thing was eight, so I know for sure that this is four. I'm just gonna press enter. And now you see my circle is actually black, which is a good thing. If I click on it and I try to move it, I cannot move this around anymore, right? I'm trying, I'm clicking with the right button here. Nothing is happening as I try to move this. Um, don't worry about those dimensions. They do not show anywhere. They are there just for your reference, unless you want them to show on your uh, final drawing. Um, and now what are we going to do? We're going to stop sketch. You always have to stop sketch to go back into this view here and to um, do all the modifications. So now I want to transform this into a cylinder. If you recall, we use the Q on our keyboard. Here is the press pull command. We can also access on the, the toolbar over there. I'm going to say press pull uh, and I'm going to select the circle. Now be careful and I'm going to zoom on this. Let me show the top view again. Oops, that's not what I wanted because it's on an angle. I want the top top. Here you go. If I click on this because lines intersect and Fusion will infer what am I trying to select is only going to get this part. I press the shift button on my keyboard to select all those parts, right? Because I want all this to be a cylinder. If I move the arrow up, I am building something. If I move the arrow down, you see that it's red, which means I'm cutting through the geometry. Well, I want to go up and I am going to say, I know the, the height of this thing. So this distance is going to be 14 millimeters because I know that that's what I want. And here I have my first cylinder. So I'm going to zoom here because now we have a little bit of a problem. If I do a, let me see a side view here, that's not helping me, I'm on the wrong angle here. Let me do this. This part, can you guys see that here? It's not touching my edge there. I have a little bit of a gap. We do not want this gap to happen. So how do we solve that? Well, no problem, super easy in Fusion 360. Um, as you notice, as we start drawing, I hope you guys notice here on the bottom, this timeline starts showing and is in order of the modifications and bodies we created. The last one we did was this one, which is the extrude. I'm gonna right click on it with my mouse and I'm gonna select edit feature. Uh, and it's highlighted in blue there. You guys probably saw that. Um, recall that when we did this, uh, we did it one side. We are only going up. I'm going to change this to two sides because, as you recall, I could go down as well to cut the part if needed. Um, the, the first one, the side one, is the one that went up. We know that. The side two is what we're going to interfere with right now. And right now it's saying it's uh, extend to a certain distance where I would enter a number. I don't want to do that. I want to extend to an object and I need to select what that object is. So I'm going to change my view here because what I want to select is the surface here on the bottom. And then this option of chain faces appear. You know, I want to do the, the extend uh, faces and I'm going to press OK. And now let's see how that look like over there. Let's go back to our view. Let's zoom this. And you're going to notice that these parts are now connected and I'm rotate a little bit and they completely touch. So now we need to create that hole, right? Uh, we already work on that um, shape. We need to create that hole. Uh, as you guys are guessing, I need to start another sketch. So I can go here and create sketch, click on the top of that circle. And this time, instead of using offset, let's create another circle because we know the diameter of that. Um, short key for circle is C. The last one I used was the center diameter, so it's going to still be here. And you can see appears here on the top. You can change that if you want to two-point circle or three-point circle. 
And remember that dashed line that appears when you write that in the center on a 90 degree angle, it appears again here on the circle. But once I get into the center point, my cursor changes as well. So I know I'm here on the center point and I'm going to enter 2.9 millimeters, press enter twice. And here I have my dimension for my hole. I'm going to do a stop sketch and you guys are probably guessing what I'm going to do next which it is our press pull, which I started by pressing the Q on my keyboard. I'm going to select the center, the circle that we just created. And if, as you remember, if I go up, I'm creating a new body. If I'm going down, I'm cutting through this body. Now you have to think about your options here. You could, um, you know, when you say extend, enter the specific distance, or you can all go to object, okay? The thing about going to object here is that if I select to object, let me go to object again, and I go here and I say I want it to this base, I'm creating an actual hole through this base, which I do not want to do. So I'm actually going to go back and keep doing to distance, right? So I'm going to undo this thing here. Let me go back. I'm selecting, you know, let me cancel this. Let me repeat this again. Select this. And I know this distance. Remember, we did this was 13. Uh, I'm sorry, 14. And then I'm going to change this to 14. And say, okay. And now I have my hole here. It's not cutting through my part. I have a little bit there. If you're going to 3D print this, it might be useful for you guys to not do the full 14, to leave a little bit of space there. Um, you know, do so you can print that part as well. So it's not just nominal, it's actually a thickness that is going to go into your 3D printer. So now that you completed that cylinder, of course, we want to repeat this, right? We have 20, uh, 12 of those in our aspirator. And of course, you don't want to have to draw 12 all over again or 11. Uh, we already did one. So uh, as you probably are thinking right now, well, simple. Let's just copy this over. So if I click the right button of my mouse here, I can choose move copy command. And then I can select the bodies. What are you going to notice? The problem here is when I select it, I select everything and I don't want to copy everything because I just want to copy the cil cylinder. The base is the same. So that's important. I'm going to cancel this. That's important for you to understand that in Infusion, when you create uh, anything on your model, it's going to be part of a component. And you see here, my component is called the name of the file, Aspirator Exercise. Inside this component, you can have multiple bodies. On my case, I only have one body. If I click here, you're going to see that I only have one body. I can add more bodies if I want to be part of a component, or I can add a new component. The same goes for sketches here. So these are all the sketches that we've done so far. This light bulb indicates what is on and off. You know, some of those are turned off automatically when I go into a different view. And what I'm going to do now, because I cannot copy this whole thing, I'm going to actually create a new component. And the moment I create a new component, everything gets grayed out to indicate that this is not part of this component. In your case, this probably is going to show as 1-1. On one, one. my case, it's showing as 3-1 because I created two other ones that I end up deleting later. And what I'm going to do here, and I want you guys to do, is to try yourselves to create another cylinder. Uh, just so you know, there is a way to split bodies after the fact. It's not the best way to create a model. It's better if you plan ahead what you're going to do so you don't have to uh, create a not very well-planned uh, model. So I just want you guys now to repeat those steps that we did before and create um, another cylinder. Okay, so now that I created my other cylinder, let's do multiple copies of this uh, cylinder here, right? Um, there are many ways to make copies of components in Fusion. Uh, of course, you can uh, just use the copy command, uh, but let's try to use something to create a pattern so you don't have to do this now 10 times. So I'm going to use the rectangular pattern 
We can also use pattern on paths because we do have that line on the side, but I just want to show you guys how to use all of them. So what are we copy? We are copying components. So when I select, I select the whole thing, right? We could change this to faces or body, but I know this is a component. Uh, now let's select the direction and I'm going to select this line as my indicator of my direction. And we're going to have some space in here in between the parts. And that's the number that I know. How many times do you want? How many of these do we want? So let's put 10. Let's see where that takes us. And the distance between them, and we know that as well, is 9 millimeters. Uh, I'm going here on the wrong direction. So I'm going to put this as minus 9. And now it's going to the correct direction. And let me see here. If we have enough, I think I need to add another one because we need 12 total. So now we are good to go and I'm just going to press OK. And now I have all these other components here and they all show multiplied here. Now you're going to notice that the problem when I do this is that each one of those cylinders is a different component. But remember, I said that we can put multiple bodies as part of one big component. So let me undo this or delete here, and you, as you can see too, uh, my history here is different, my timeline is just different, it's smaller, because it's only reflecting the timeline of this component, not the timeline of the whole model. So I'm gonna do undo, I'm undoing this. And let's try it again using a different way of doing pattern. So I'm gonna try using now, instead of the rectangular pattern, I'm gonna do the pattern on path. And now I'm gonna say that I want to copy bodies, not components. So I'm going to select that cylinder again. The path that I'm going to follow is any line here that goes in a horizontal row and parallel to that body. The distance we got, we know that is nine millimeters. And this time we know we need 11 uh, of them. And as you can see, if I just put extent, what it's doing is, is really just um, placing this 11 multiple cylinders on a distance of a of nine millimeters that's not what you want you want that should be the space in between uh each one of them right so we want this to be the space between them so we, we change that um for spacing and there's not 0 0.9 millimeters it's nine millimeters um and here we see how that works we like the result we click okay and now you have them so as you can see here on your browser on the left side of your screen. Now you don't have all those multiple components being created. You actually have bodies inside that component, which is better for you in case you wanna select only one of them and you need to modify something in your structure with only one of them. So hopefully by now you notice that it's really important to plan ahead and know what's going to be bodies or components in your assembly. So it's easier for you in case you need to move them. And uh, that's the end of our session here. Good luck for you guys uh, designing and drawing your aspirator.